Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. My name's Matt. I'm at the Cody Firearms Museum and today I'm taking a little look at another one of John Browning's prototype rifles. This rifle departs from Browning's earlier lever action rifle designs in a number of important ways. Most interestingly, it uses on-block clips, instead of the tube magazine traditionally used by Winchester. John Browning and his brother Matthew filed the patent covering the design in June 1892. The rifle is in what was typically referred to at the time as a musket configuration, signifying that it was a military long arm. It has a 32.5 inch barrel, which is held in place by two barrel bands. Overall, the rifle is around 50 inches in length and weighs just over nine pounds. The rifle is chambered in a 30 caliber cartridge, likely the then new 3040 Crag. It has a tangent style rear sight with range graduations from 100 out to 1000 yards. Okay, let's take a closer look at the prototype and have a look at how it works. During the 1890s, Browning experimented with a series of magazine systems, including an on-block clip system. This rifle uses a five round magazine, which is fed from an on-block clip. The idea of an on-block clip was relatively new, with Ferdinand Manlicker patenting the idea in the 1880s and using it in his model 1886 and 1888 rifles. It's unclear if Browning was familiar with Manlicker's system, but the two appeared to be very similar. If you're unfamiliar with what an on-block clip is, it means that cartridges are loaded into the weapon while still in the clip, rather than being stripped from it, as in stripper clips. We can see this in Browning's patent here. In his 1892 patent, Browning somewhat confusingly refers to the clip as a magazine. Browning's prototype holds five rounds in its clip, and from the patent drawings we can see that the clip wasn't reversible. While sadly we don't have an example of Browning's clip to look at today, we do get a look at it in his 1892 patent, and it gives us a good idea of what it would have looked like. It clearly has an angled cut at the top of the clip, which appears to have been used to help guide the round up into the chamber as it was pushed forward by the bolt. If we overlaid the original patent over the rifle, we can get some idea of how it actually worked. The rounds were pushed up into the action by a follower arm, which was actuated by a V-spring located in front of the magazine housing. The bottom of the fixed magazine has a cutout corresponding to the clip to allow it to fall or to be pushed clear by a new clip. The rifle also departs from the traditional hammer system and uses a striker fired action. From the pattern drawings we can see how the rifle's striker worked, with a coil spring extending into the stock and a sear holding the striker to the rear. The striker is made up of two pieces, with the striker itself hitting a long firing pin inside the bolt. The striker has what the pattern refers to as a thumb piece to enable recocking and to indicate if the weapon is cocked or not. The striker is cocked by the cycling of the lever and is held in place by the trigger sear. As we can see, the first half of the lever's travel pulls the bolt to the rear, while the second part cocks the striker. An arm extending from the lever pushed the bolt rearward until the trigger sear was engaged. The lever itself was held in the closed position, preventing out of battery discharges by what Browning's pattern calls a downward projecting dog, which projected through a small hole in the trigger assembly link and locked into a latch in the front of the lever loop. We can see the dog and where it catches onto the lever in the pattern drawing here. In order to give the lever enough throw to open the action far enough to allow a round to be loaded, the trigger mechanism has to be pivoted out of the receiver, much like the earlier Winchester 1886. The use of a striker rather than an exposed hammer allows the rifle bolt's travel to be enclosed rather than have the bolt project out of the rear of the receiver, as in previous Winchester lever actions. We can see that this rifle's bolt slides back at an angle, partially down into the wrist of the rifle's stock. This is arguably more ergonomic and potentially helps to prevent the ingress of dirt. The bolt has a pair of trunnions which project from the sides. These run inside the longitudinal grooves either side of the receiver, while the rear of the bolt is free to angle up and down as it cycles. From this angle we get a better look at the extractor and how the bolt tilts down into the wrist of the rifle stock. The action is locked by the rear of the bolt secured against the rear of the receiver, rather than with a rising locking block. 
Let's take a look inside the action. From this angle we can see into the chamber and we can see the recess for the extractor on the right. In the centre we have the cartridge lifter or follower. As we move backwards we can just see the gap which the empty clip would have passed through and just the front of the bolt projecting up out of the wrist of the stock. On the right of the bolt we can just see the extractor itself. And as we move further backwards we have the striker assembly with its thumb piece. In this slowed down footage, as the lever goes forward, we can see that it unlocks the bolt, dropping it into the wrist. And we can also see the striker being cocked. This leaves enough room for the follower to push up the next round out of the clip. And as the lever is brought forward again, it would chamber the round and close the action, with the rear of the bolt locking against the rear of the receiver. Finally, in terms of markings, we have one small maker's mark stamped on the barrel just ahead of the rear barrel band that reads Browning Brothers Ogden, Utah. The design was purchased by Winchester and the Browning's patent was granted in November 1892. The gun, like many of Browning's designs of the period, never saw production, making this a rare one-of-a-kind prototype. It's an elegant design and the action is smooth. When Winchester finally did seek to produce a military lever action rifle, they chose another of Browning's designs which retained the traditional rear locking bolt, but used a box magazine. This became the Model 1895. Well guys, thanks for watching another episode of the Armorer's Bench. It's really cool to get a chance to take a look at one of John Browning's personal prototype rifles that never actually went into production as it is. So, I'm Matt Moss. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, share the videos with your friend, and don't forget you can support me on Patreon as well. There's a link for that in the description below. See you next time.